when Anton asked me to present in addition to my scientific interest of um, head and neck cancer, I decided to talk about a fantastic topic. Some of you would think that this is something extraordinary because NGOs don't play a major role in uh, the Russian society. By the Russian society, I mean post-Soviet society. So representatives of Kazakhstan and other post-Soviet republics don't get offended because in my understanding, uh, you are in the same family. I work in Moscow. I'm an uh, oncologist surgeon and uh, a patient as well. I survived uh, three surgical operations. That's why my data is very personal. See, I set up several NGOs which are functional and they are very dear to my heart. See, in the context of Russia, we try to do something through NGOs because in my understanding, the state and the pharmaceutical companies do a lot which they think is correct. However, the participation of a of the wider country is uh, very limited. It is in its infancy. This is uh, the geography. This is the Eurasian Oncology Federation for Oncology of Oncology. So we took the continent of Eurasia. Two thirds uh, of the world populations live there, but the main. Uh, share, the lion's share of uh, health care and um, oncology is uh, concentrated in the United States. We have a um, colossal potential. At the time of the collapse of the Soviet Union, which was 25, 26 years back, the Soviet Union has the most developed uh, network of oncological institution institutions globally, unprecedented. And any person living in this uh, Soviet Union state uh, had an access to at least a minimal oncological level of care. Say so at that time, some um, states within the United States didn't have even a single oncological institution. For example, Florida, where Lee Moshev Mr. Limoshev set up uh, in the end of 1970s out uh, of um, tobacco excise, um, set up a uh, Limov Cancer Center. This is um, an example of a mass movement. So this Limov Cancer Center, in the rating of uh, United States Oncological uh, Treatment Centers, this, uh, makes into the five top institutions uh, and it was set up uh, as a non-for-profit, which is non-state run. And there are other, like uh, Memorial Slot Care in New York, and there are similar institutions in Europe. Here in Russia and uh, the CIS countries, all major oncological institutions are state-supported. We shall start thinking whether all of them must stay state supported or can we allow some NGOs to do certain things and uh, now a little bit the breakdown of onco diseases in this country I uh, compared them against uh, BRICS countries and the United States I'm an Indian but I believe uh, I'm a Russian as well and However, my ties with India are strong. So you, there are 1 billion 200 million citizens in India and less than 1 million oncological patients are registered per annum, which is a very um, limited figure. It means people die of cancer, but uh, they didn't get diagnosed. About uh, these countries' potential, Russia, is among the first nations uh, when it comes uh, to the number of uh, healthcare professionals per 
capita. This is a page from the Forbes magazine. In the United States, 27 doctors per 1,000 uh, citizens. Uh, and here we have 49 per 1,000 and uh, 0 0.6 per 1,000 uh, uh, population is in India. However, today in major Indian center, in mega cities of India, when it comes to availability of high quality health care, uh, they are ahead of some Russian major cities. See, of course, we have inequality in, in India. Uh, large cities offer high quality medical health care and uh, poor population has nothing. But that's um, slightly along a different note. However, because uh, uh, India has a pharmaceutical production, they can get drugs uh, of the same quality but cheaper. Now about China. So the uh, doctor to patients indicator is uh, twice as large as the Indians, but thanks to the pharmaceutical industry, they uh, propel forward. Now, look, uh, let us uh, consider the educational system in Russia, Kazakhstan, and India. We are losing to both the Western and the Indian societies. If we look at the quality of uh, oncology, on oncologist training, and when it comes not only to oncologists but adjacent professions, so neither for duration nor for the depth of professional training, we will not meet neither Western nor Eastern standards. We are behind Korea and India. We must recognize that we are dragging behind. So we can't copy the residency from the West. You can prolong it to five to eight years, but you have to radically change the mentality and approaches, because then it will take even 15 years. Let us call a spade a spade. We must change the essence. I, will, I believe we can keep internships uh, as we do them now, but we must change their quality. If you trained an oncologist surgeon that into the curriculum, you must include all aspects needed for the training, including manual skills, because uh, our students uh, present, um, present uh, doctoral thesis uh, and they graduate but uh, uh, they uh, didn't do major surgeries. Even they have uh, doctorate degrees. In India, the problem is of a different nature. There is an Indian science, a pseudoscience, and near the science. And also um, a gray, uh, gray segment where people apply only for getting semi-valid dissertation. So there are professionals who would write you these thesis. There are good tools, um, good institutions like Skolkova Foundations. They come up with excellent tools how to assess the quality of supplied applications. I. You know, I am one of uh, the advisors for Skolkova, but I get nothing out of it. And also, uh, this is my disclaimer. I can see how Ross Atom, Russian, uh, Russian nuclear segment, and Skolkova work. While the scientific community knows about it, we need at least like 20 or 50 Skolkova foundations uh, to replicate them across post Soviet space but they must be uh, supported uh, non-governmentally because we have rich people who, and all is needed is the political and people's will. So I came from in Nara, Ta Tamil Nadu province in India and uh, the population is 55 million. It's similar to 50% of the Russian population. They have the best cancer register in India uh, with 55,000 new cancer cases registered per annum. And uh, in Russia, uh, we um, register about uh, 
600,000 new cases. And if you extrapolate, then at least this uh, province must have around 300,000 patients registered in their re uh, register. See, and if you ex extrapolate then the United States data to Russia, we will have a, a much bigger patient population. And then across different nosologies, we will not have like 30 or 40 percent of advanced ca cancers, but only uh, 5 to 7 percent. This is our target. And I believe, trust me, that the Russian model, uh, only through the administration channels, I would pre have preferred that Alexei Mikhailovich is not in the room when I say it, but unfortunately he is with us. Well, the more uh, management will work like Alexei Mikhailovich, uh, the, the better success we will have, because he showed his efficiency, but he is not enough. We need more. Unfortunately, we don't have enough efficient managers in the health care. We are skipping some slides. In India, we don't have many patients registered. I would say one out of five or even even, uh, or even eight patients are registered. And many die uh, without even knowing of their cancer diagnosis. It's a paradox because we have an extremely well-developed uh, pharmaceutical industry. And even President Putin approached his Indian train, uh, friends uh, with the call to start uh, helping developing Russia's uh, pharmaceutical industry. And I am positive, uh, positive that in 10 to 15 years, Russia will be uh, a pharmaceutical power. Lancet Oncology, it was a, um, an, a paper submitted uh, in collaboration with many authors, and it talks about uh, oncological issues in Russia, China, and India. We had many debates as preparing this article for several months, and we arrived to a consensus. Well, some uh, uh, authors of this paper, when it was published, are not really satisfied with what it is written. Uh, so we still have debates. Uh, the article is 50 pages long. So the issues faced by India, Russia, and Kazakhstan have many things in common. For example, when it comes to oncological training for surgeons or training of uh, chemotherapists, uh, uh, in India is similar to what it's done in the West, but in Russia, even in the living institutions, it's not. We have a potential for cooperation, therefore, uh, to train manual skills, to allow our surgeons to get hands-on experience. Nobody will allow you to go into a Western clinic, but you can agree with an Indian or Chinese clinic to accept young Russian surgeons for our shared interest and for in the interest of the science. We do have a lot of material for the development of science, but we don't have proper biobanks. One was created created in St. Petersburg, but this was just a, a small step. What challenges do we face in Russia and CIS? Uh, I'm speaking about post-Soviet space, uh, Eurasian area, unique uh, system of oncological assistance that was created in Soviet times. Nowadays, uh, when uh, financing decreases, I see only one way out. The government should go away from total control of uh, medical institutions, uh, at least partially. There should be pilot projects in the regions. They should launch. Why? Because Otherwise, uh, we will be ranked second uh, among permanent members of the UN and leading countries. The government should allocate money, purchase, and all different things uh, should be determined at the level of uh, companies uh, so that people don't think that you invest uh, into equipment, but you don't think about uh, uh, training of personnel. In the 15 years, uh, Russia has uh, proved its uh, position of uh, 
a really strong country at the international level. Uh, we are a strong military country. It means that we can become a strong country in terms of health care. I've been working with the challenges in CIS countries for several years, and my conclusion is as follows. Many countries uh, in the West uh, do not register patients like that. Perhaps uh, we do not have digitalized um, approach. Uh, we can speak about it. Professor Miravishvili is here in the hall. He uh, in his country and in Belarus, they have uh, the best uh, cancer registers. Perhaps in other regions of Russia, the quality of register is not so good, but at least we have something in many Eurasian countries. There is, There are no data at all in comparison to us. We have a lot of problems with min mindset. We have too many clever people that do not want to listen to each other. We have to resolve this problem somehow. I will skip uh, all that. I won't take more than that. So, whom to train? We need not only doctors. We need a lot of different specialists. We have to train our nurses who study for five years in colleges. Uh, uh, they. Not everything should be done by doctors. Nurses, research nurses should also help, and they should make theses, and doctors should actually work and publish according, with the help of their assistants. Kazakh people are good. They change the, the system. You don't have to write a PhD thesis to uh, work properly. They have a master degree. They are going in front of us thanks to their reasonable policy. They are successful. And it's not only about words. I visit there often and I work closely with them. I talk to regular doctors and talk to the representative of Nazarbayev family. But they have a good system because they acknowledged uh, that their situation was not good. And I think in five years, our doctors will go there to study. That's why we have to think on how to educate and train uh, full-time, part-time, distant, combined, uh, distant training. And this is very important with the help of internet technologies. And at the end of the day, I would like to tell you that in July 7, a Global Cancer Leaders Summit will be organized in Moscow. There, they will talk about uh, um, um, prevention of uh, cancer research, uh, psychological support of oncological patients and their relatives and those who want to come there, please uh, write a message to me, uh, eafo.com, and I hope that uh, you will be able to come and join us. Thank you very much for your attention. Just one proposal. I just want to repeat one thing. If uh, other members of society, uh, except uh, for governments uh, and companies, we will manage to fight against uh, cancer and we will be among the leaders. Thank you for your attention.